Okay, here we go with um, day two, health effects of radiation and um, in chapter 10. We should be on sapling 10.2, you should have finished quiz 10.2, and um, use the day after today, uh, today's lecture to finish your cloud chamber lab. So as we look at the health effects of radiation, there's a lot of things that we need to um, consider. Um, radiation does have a lot of different health effects, and you need to be careful. You'll notice that as you go to the hospitals, they'll be wearing um, film badges to keep track of how much radiation they're getting. As a radio tech, a radiology tech comes to do your x-rays, they'll go and hide behind a wall while they leave you there while they're getting x-rays um, because they're exposed to a lot. You can see here on the different effects um, between tolerable levels to moderate levels to then high risk. Um, and what, how does it affect the different doses of um, your body? Give you a second to sort of look through that um, and see how, where you would fit on that line. Okay, let's go ahead and go forward. So radiation effects on health being investigated at the molecular level. So here we have a person being um, irradiated or having radiation come and being exposed. When a cell is exposed to, to radiation, its DNA is damaged. So that's what they were using in the other um, food to kill bacteria and stuff. Um, when the CNL, C cell is damaged, DNA, the damaged cell either dies or it attempts to repair itself. If it dies, it's dead. If it, repairs to, if it repairs itself and it's fine, then it's a normal cell. But if it repairs itself and it doesn't do it right, we get what's known as a cancer cell. And that's where we have things that grow out of control. So the cells responsible for, re, for immunity are known as lymphocytes. Um, these will decrease with radiation. We have more dead cells and the lymphocytes with impaired functions. So I'm going to have the um, sub stop the video right now and play this video for you, um, and then we'll come back. Okay, hopefully you've been able to watch that video on radiation. We're going to go on and talk about the measuring the effects of radiation. Um, typical dose, full set of dental x-rays, you get 40 millirems. Um, flying to round trip to DC would give you 5 millirems. Living outside a nuclear power plant would only give you 0.1. Smoking a pack um, of cigarettes a day will lose you six years of your life. Working in construction, 227. Working near, working in a new nuclear power plant, 51 days. And typical annual background radiation will lose you about 18 days. So we've talked about the penetrating power of, of radiation, I believe, before, but we're going to go through it again. Um, because you do need to know it really well. Alpha particles are stopped by paper. Beta particles by about 0 .7, 0 0.5 centimeters of lead. That's about what the x-ray technicians put on you when um, that heavy apron. Now, if you had 20 of those on you, that would stop a gamma ray. Or if you had five feet of concrete. Hmm, that doesn't sound too much fun. So as you look at here, there's some other things you can sort of see what's going on. Uh, medical x-rays, we do want them to go through the skin. So they do go through the skin. Um, but they can be stopped with lead. Gamma rays go through thicker lead, and neutrons will even go through um, the five feet of concrete to a certain point. So what we do is um, when we consider risk of radiation, we use what's known as the inverse square law. What's the intensity and what's my distance? So the intensity divided by the intensity of I'm moving away by the distance squared. So this is a inverse squared law that we're going to need to be um, looking at. And it, it's true, as far, the farther away from a uh, radioactive source that you get, the less exposure that you have. And the, the farther away, it actually is inversely squared. It's a distance. It's about how far away can you get from the source. So looking at this one right here, let's do a problem. Okay, so remember that the equation is intensity 1 divided by intensity 2 equals distance 1 squared divided by distance 2 squared. 
and double check that. I'll go back a source. Oh, I got them backwards. Distance one goes on the bottom. I always get that mixed up, so make sure. So like the Graham's Law equation, they split places. So distance two squared divided by distance one squared. Okay, so as we go through there, um, here is I1. Here is distance one. Um, and here is distance two. And we're solving for intensity two. So we can plug in. At this point, it's probably just as easy to plug in. So 18.5 units divided by x, which we don't know, or I2, is equal to distance 2, which is 100 squared, divided by distance 1, which is 50 squared. So we can put that through our calculator, and we've got... 100 squared divided by 50 squared and we get 4 on this side so we've got 18.5 divided by x equals 4 so basically we're going to divide both sides by 4 and times both sides by x so x will go off here 4 will go off here so my intensity 2 becomes 4.625 units by moving twice the distance. Okay, let's have you try a problem. Um, a radiologist found that in 30 minute period the dose from a radioactive source was 75 units at a distance of, so 30 minutes really don't, doesn't matter, but 75 units does and the meters do. What would the dose be at the same time for a distance of 2 meters? So, see if you can figure it out real quick. Give you a minute. Okay, coming back together, let's see how you did. You should have plugged in something like this and figured it out. So you should end up getting more because you're closer, right? A lot more. All right, good job. Let's keep going. And you don't need to score it. Okay, so measurements for units of radiation. Physical unit of radiation is a radiation measurement unit indicated, indicating the activity of a source from the radiation. For example, the number of nuclear decays per minute. A biological unit of radiation is the radiation me measurement indicating the damage caused by radiation of the living tissue. A Curie is a physical unit of radiation measured co corresponding to 3.7 times 10 to the minus 1 nuclear disintegrations per second. And a Bacurel is a physical unit of radiation measurement corresponding to 1 nuclear disintegration per second. So there's a lot of different units that we use for radiation, um, and you need to be familiar with them. Uh, again, I'm putting this up on the web on your canvas, and if that doesn't work for you, you can always go back to your book and get these definitions. I am going to move forward. Okay, we've got a, ro a rotogen. A rotogen is a biological unit of radiation measured using X-ray or gamma rays. The quantity of radiation that generates 2.1 times 10 to the 9 ion pairs per centimeter cubed of dry air or 1.8 times 10 to the 22nd ion pairs per gram of tissue. A rad is a biological unit of radiation measuring corresponding 1.10 to the negative 2 joules 
or 2.4 times 10 to the negative third calories of energy to one kilogram of tissue. And then we've got a gray, and a gray is a biological unit of radiation measurement corresponding to the transfer of one joule of energy to one kilogram of tissue. And then we've got a RAM, and a RAM is a biological unit of radiation measurement corresponding to the health effect produced by one rotogen, which is the one on the top, of gamma or x-rays regardless of what type of radiation was involved. So each of these definitions has a specific use. And you do need to be familiar with the definitions of these and be able to know which one would be um, used in any situation. Again, you can go back and or have the um, subpause this if you haven't got what you need written down. And I'm going to go ahead and go forward now. Okay, so a film badge or a dossier meter measures the personal exposure in rams or sieverts from a, a radioactive source. If you have a radioactive source, you're going, to, you're going to measure what it's giving off in bacurales or curies. And the intensity of the gamma source is measured in rotogens. What is a, the absorbed dose is what we, what we report in rads or grays. And we can convert it to a dose equivalent in rams or sieverts. So this picture sort of helped me to understand where each one was going to be used. If it helps you, great. If not, then find a way for you to remember how each one of these are used. Again, I'm going forward now. So um, in the book, underneath the microwave, you can grab a book if you don't have one. On page 339, there is a radiation exposure in modern life that I'd like you to look at. Um, so go ahead and take a minute and go pull that out and read that with a partner. Go ahead and pause the video. Oh, these would be the blue books. Okay, so if we look at our radi life in, in general and how radiation is happening around us, there's tons of different radiation that's going on around us. The non-ionizing is not going to hurt us. The ionizing is where we have damage and things going on. So this sort of gives you a good idea of, of looking at everything. We have radiation um, therapy. We use radiation to sterilize things for surgery. So let's look at some conversion factors. And some of these you might want to get down or take a picture of the board. Um, if you don't have them in your notes, I can't remember if they're in your notes or not. But these are how you convert back and forth between all of them. And you will do, need to be doing some conversions back and forth. So this is a good um, conversion factor chart to have. Um, you can also Google a conversion factor for um, this also, but you won't be able to do that on the test. All right, so the equipment that we use to detect radiation, we've got radiation detectors and scintillation detectors. And those are what is on the bottom left-hand corner. It's just, it just gives you a number, okay? It tells you what's going on. It goes through a pho photomultiplier tube, and it measures how much is getting, how much radiation is giving. A film badge they use oftentimes in the hospitals where it's just a film that gets exposed as you come in contact with um, radiation. And then, of course, we have the old-fashioned geiger molar tube, um, which you probably saw on Ghostbusters. If you ever watched Ghostbusters, they used it as to find the ghosts. Um, but it's basically just a, a Geiger counter. Okay, so some medical uses of radioisotopes. They're used as a tracer to follow through to show where things are going, how blood is passing through a special, uh, through arteries, through veins, how food or that would pass through the digestive system, or to look at specific organs. Hot spots are tissues in which the radioactive tracer concentrates. So if they're looking at the thyroid, they want that um, radioactive tracer to go to the thyroid. 
um, tissue, cold spots are where the tissue from a radio tracer is excluded or is not allowed to go in. So, diagnostic tra tracers, the things that we need to know about diagnostic tracers is they need to have a short half-life. We don't want them in the body for a long time. Um, the daughters that need to be produced from the direct tracer should be non-toxic and, and ideally should go right to a stable isotope. The radioisotope's half-life should be long enough to be prepared and administered and have a test taken, but be out of the system fairly quickly. Um, radiation given off should be gamma rays to ensure they can detect it from outside the body, otherwise they would be stopped by the body. And the radioisotope should be concentrated to form hot or cold spots in the diseased area that you're looking at. So what is the radiology community doing to properly manage radiation exposure to patients during exams? These are the things they're doing. All right, so internal therapeutic use. So um, we want it to be able to emit less penetrating alpha and beta radiation to restrict the, atten the extent of damage to desired tissue. So we don't want it to be giving a lot of beta and alpha off from inside the body because then it's sort of trapped and causes problems. Um, we want the half-life again long enough to allow sufficient time for desired therapy, but we want it to decay and become non-toxic with little or no radiation. And we want it to target the tissue that we want to um, damage if we're using it to kill cancer or if we're using it to look at something, we want it not to damage it. So there's a very specific thing that we want to do here. And they're looking at the right here uh, at a thyroid. Okay, so some examples of how we use, um, medically use radioisotopes. And this is also in your book on page 342. So we use carbon-14 to date how old something is. We use car phosphorus 32 and 33 to um, research genetics in biology. Selenium-75 for protein studies in life science, strontium-85 for how things are metabolized and bone formation studies, hydrogen-3 or tritium to study the life science and drug metabolism, cobalt-60 is used as radiotherapy to prevent cancer, um, iodine-131 is to locate brain tumors and monitor, monitor cardiac, liver, and thyroid activities, Carbon-14 is used to study metabolic changes for um, patients with diabetes, gout, and anemia. Carbon-11 is tagged onto glucose to monitor organs during a PET scan. Um, Sodium-24 is to study blood um, circulation. Thallium-201 to determine damage to heart tissue and detection of tumors. And Technetium-99M um, is to locate brain tumors and damaged heart cells. And it's also a radio tracer in medical diagnostics, um, imaging of organs and blood flow studies. So we use a lot of radio tracers or radioisotopes. So um, in your book, there is a, a little thing about radon, a chemically inert health risk on page 343. I want you to go ahead and do a pair share. Go ahead and read back and forth um, every other sentence or you guys decide, but take a minute now and read that on page 343 in the blue books underneath the microwave if you haven't got them out again. Go ahead and pause the video. Okay, I'm coming back from the video. Hopefully you, in, you learned about um, radon. Radon is very common here in Utah. You have to be very careful with it. It's a lot because we have a lot of granite and, and the bedrock. Um, has granite in it and granite gives off radon um, gases. You have to be careful because it's another way of smoking with not smoking. You actually get that radioisotope down inside you and it emits alpha particles that burst and cause and affects the lungs. Um, when a house has problem with radon gases, they often put a fan in to pull the radon out and push fresh air in. Um, Non-medical uses of radioisotopes, we use it for radioactive dating, a process um, for determining the age of artifacts and rocks. My daughter is an archaeologist and they use it a lot. Um, based on the amount of half-life of radioisotopes contained in the ob object, so we can find out how old something is and how long ago it, 
it was alive. Okay, I'm going to have them stop and um, I want to show you a video on carbon dating right now. So I'm going to have him show that. It's the carbon dating cut um, video. So go ahead and show that and then come on back. Pause this video. Okay, we're coming back. We're going to go ahead. Uh, meanwhile, at the house for old Adams, oh, when I was young, I, I was an atom of uranium-238. I felt so alive and dangerous, then one day I accidentally ejected an alpha particle. Now look at me, I'm a spent old atom of lead-206. All my life since has been nothing but decay, decay, decay. Radioactive uh, isotopes often decay more than one time until they finally get to something that's stable. They often lose neutrons or alpha particles or beta particles, um, just like this cartoon. Oh my gosh, I've lost a neutron. Don't worry, you can get one free of charge because neutrons do not have charge. So that's where we're at today for day two. So I would like you to finish your cloud chamber lab. Go ahead and get all that work done on that. Start working on your sapling. Um, and we'll see you next time, our next day in class.